Hello, I am Dr. Alicia Wynn, Applied Cultural Anthropologist. I am a consultant and the owner of Consider the Culture. I am also the project director for the African American Oral History Project, which is a virtual pilot project sponsored by the Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County. This project began in July of 2020, where five young people interviewed eight elders representing various cities. West Palm Beach, Delray Beach, Pahokee, Riviera Beach, and Belle Glade, Florida. These young people interviewed these individuals from their own communities. And because it's virtual and the fact that we are in a pandemic, we had to do everything but virtually, whether it's through training, through uh, practicing interviews and preparing young people for interviews. We took over a few months to actually do these interviews and now we are in the process of a final project. We've had three interns representing uh, Palm Beach Atlantic University and our students represented various high schools throughout the county. And so we are so excited that this project is, has gone underway and now we are excited for the end product for individuals to see and the community to see the lives and the stories of our elders who share their stories about what life was like in Palm Beach County in the areas of racism in the education system, segregation, and areas of housing and areas of what life was like growing up in these specific areas. So what you will see is various areas of people's lives and life during that time and how they triumph over these trials and was still successful and made major contributions into this city and through this county. get new desk now. When I went to school, our desk came from a uh, bell glade. I can remember the books we had and the chairs, the desk. I guess we were glad to have books and know how to read. We used to think that if the, the white children were smarter than us, and I don't know what what gave us that assumption, but we would think that because I guess because they came from another school, we had better books or whatever, but once they integrated, they, everybody blend in with truth. I feel like they do a little thing in February for Black History Month, and that's it. It's like, um, Martin Luther King, um, Rosa Parks, and they call it a day. Okay. I mean, it's kind of like you relearn the same things. All right, we're recording. We will ask you a series of questions. Do we have your consent to conduct this interview? Yes, you do. All right, let's get started. What was it like going to school during segregation? We didn't have too much thought about it because we knew that was all that that, it, that was to it. The bad thing about it, I lived on Fern and the white school was on the next street from me. And of course, you know, we could not go to that school. We weren't allowed to go. In the school, I have gone down on Gardenia for many a days to get books from the uh, book building from the white school to bring over to the black school for us to use. I have been there, I know. So these things that I'm telling you now, uh, nobody told me these are the things that I saw. Mm -hmm. The EDH was everybody's location in high school that we had to attend. So that was a very big difference in, because they just felt like black folks just needed enough education to be able to get a job. And that's why we were bused there. And our day, I feel like we were limited. Just the fact of everybody going to a vocational high school. 
that means that you you don't have sense enough to get a good education. In other words, all you can do is learn how to get a job. But at the, at the end of the day, it proved that that didn't pan out. So everybody now has the opportunity. And basically, there are, there are funds out there now to help you. Things probably I didn't know about, that I probably could have gotten some help on that, but I didn't know about it. And now you have people out there now that's advocating for you, trying to show you which way to go and try to help you to get to where you want to get in all phases of life. And so that's the difference than when it was in my day. The first Negro Senior High School in the Everglades opened at the Okeechobee Migratory Camp Monday, September 8, 1941. Now, when this school was opened, it was the only school for black students in the Glades area. We had one school bus. Students who were enrolled in school that had driver's license or could get driver's license would drive the bus from Canal Point, the Hokin Project, and then Bell Glade. Then another student who lived in Bell Glade would uh, take over the job of driving the bus and would go west to South Bay, Lake Harbor, and Cloyston and pick up those students and bring them to school. It was very difficult, but they didn't have hired bus drivers that you have today. These were students. Was your neighborhood segregated? Oh, definitely segregated, yes. Very much so. Uh, segregated and in the way of we lived in one area and Caucasian lived, lived in the other area. From First Street, well, a little over First Street, out down by the train station, all the way up to, well, it ended up being near 23rd Street, but at first it was 12th Street, and 12th was Palm Beach Lakes. So it ended up being um, 23rd Street. And that's where most of the black folk lived. We had our business, there were businesses because we had our own grocery stores. Uh, there was a cleaners, uh, all black run. But um, yes, everything was very, very segregated. There were, you've seen the signs where it said, oh, over the white, over the uh, water, water faucets, white and colored. Yes, there was a, a faucet for the white folk and a faucet for the baby. Same water. I, I don't know if they realized it. It was the same water. Has this changed how you looked at the community, your community? It definitely made me appreciate my community more. It's kind of more personal for me since it's in, like we talked about one in my city. It became, you know, a bit more personal. So I'm just like, oh my God. Um, I guess it changed the way that I like view like where I live. Like hearing elders from like Palm Beach County um, talking about like streets that I know and they're like talking about how this used to be there. And... The school that I thought that I went to go to used to be like white school for only white people. I'm like, wow, never knew that. I walk past them every day and never knew. What was it like when schools were first integrated? And when that happened, they had a lot of race riots and stuff and, you know, because the white kids did not want the black kids to come to school. They would fight them. They would throw rocks and bricks and it was a whole lot of, uh, just like now. Do you feel like the education changed after integration of schools? I'm sure that kids uh, was exposed to more with uh, integration because a lot of the things that we did not have when the schools were se segregated, it did not deter us from not being able to go to colleges and to be successful in life and to build successful careers because 
our first teachers were dedicated and they were determined that we would be successful. Any advice that you would want to share with the younger generation? Whatever you see that's against you, you either get them straight and if you take anything to go further, you go further with it, but you are just as good as anybody in this country.